Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be here and very proud to be able to present our program Equator. And so far, we've heard so much about Equator, and uh, um, but maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit of background about our program will, will sort of help you to understand where we are coming from, what we have done during the last few years we've been around and what are our plans, what we would like to do in the future. And it's, uh, for me, I've been involved with Equator since its very beginning in 2006 and it's, it's very rewarding to see how um, slowly but surely the Equator and the whole notion of uh, improving reporting is really making um, its way through. Um, Equator doesn't have anything to do with the equatorial regions. It's the acronym which stands for Enhancing the Quality and Transparency of Health Research. And you might perhaps notice that there's no word reporting because um, it's kind of difficult to cut reporting part from the whole research conduct because um, good research paper surely needs to be first of all based on well-designed and well-planned, well-conducted study. So we deliberately didn't put the word e reporting into our acronym because if we're lucky uh, to be here in years to come, we're hoping to start influencing research conduct as well and um, try to improve the outputs on larger sort of um, extent. Um, Equator actually has very simple mission. Um, Equator seeks to improve the reliability and value of health research literature by promoting transparent and accurate reporting of health research studies. Um, it's a very simple mission, but I can, can assure you it's very hard work. Um, and um, although Equator started as a completely new initiative, um, it builds on and advances the work of uh, groups which develop reporting guidelines such as consort or stroke. And those groups, they focus mainly on the reporting guidelines development. And one of the, one of the reasons perhaps why consort has been so successful is because there's lots of effort which goes into the development of this guideline and to, to its continuous development because methodology, research methodology is developing and consort group, they're fortunate enough to, to secure some basic funding to help them to keep up this methodology, do the methodology research themselves and keep the guideline evidence-based and improve the recommendations. So Equator focuses not so much on the development of reporting guidelines, although we help groups which decide to develop reporting guidelines. We focus on their implementation. We launched our meeting in 2008 in London. As Ian mentioned, as Ian mentioned earlier, we were very, very proud to have Ian with us and because that was the year where we also delivered the first Equator lecture. And, um, as, as you probably gathered by now, it is an international initiative because research and research publication has no boundaries and you need to, or we need to work all together to, to make um, the improvement really worthwhile on the international scale. So, what is the main focus of our work? We try to promote <coughs> rigorous, responsible reporting of health research studies. Um, we're providing resources to people. We're trying to support use of these resources through education and training program. We also get involved in research and various evaluations, further development of reporting guidelines. And um, we actively seek collaborations with other teams from other countries and so on. We're very fortunate to have absolutely fantastic group of people who are very knowledgeable and very enthusiastic about all this. And I personally consider myself extremely lucky to be able to work with, with people like this. And um, we, we now employ three members of staff and we're all based in Oxford. And uh, my colleagues, Alison and Shauna are here with us as well, so if you, if you want to talk more about Equator or have any questions, please find them as well, and I'm sure they would be very happy to talk to you about. 
I would also like to thank to funders who support the equator because without their support, we would not be able to do what we're doing. And um, although it's constant struggle for us to secure even minimum funding to keep us going, um, I would really like to highlight all these funders who do support us. And uh, the idea behind, actually, I should say, the first money we received were from the UK National Health Service, NHS. And the idea behind this was actually very simple because in order to make research literature better available to the UK clinicians, you actually need to make an effort and improve all research literature published worldwide. So that's why UK supports, we, we have most funding from the UK at the moment, but we obviously would very much like to, to expand into other countries. And as Gerd said, you know, we need to develop local collaborations, which might perhaps involve raising money from local research funding agencies or local governments. And it's, it's long, long term work, but we're hoping to make more focused effort and to start expanding and getting involved more people from, from individual countries and just looking at uh, people who, who are present at this meeting. We have a number of candidates from various countries around Europe or around the world. And um, so that's, that's really fantastic. Um, so what are our main achievements over the last few years? Um, in, two, in 2007, first things what we did, we launched our website, and the Equator website is probably the most important product of what we're doing. And um, I think the, the main sort of... Um, the main importance of, of the website is that it pulls together all the resources which are relevant to uh, good publication of research into one place because there's a number of guidelines or guidance published and they're scattered across journals, across various websites, but it's very difficult to find them in one place. So what we set up to do, and we thought it's gonna be easy task, okay, in 2006, we thought we pulled together all reporting guidelines and put them on the website. And then we realized we need to, because when you write research article, you need to know not only about the content, what you need to put, but also if somebody's not experienced enough, you need to know how to use English well, how to write good, in good scientific style, and particularly young research students might not know uh, exactly how to start writing their first paper. So we started adding some, some of the other resources, like resources on scientific writing. There are various guidelines, influential editorial groups developed for, for their editors. So we started to pull, pull out these together as well. As I mentioned, research reporting is closely connected with research conduct. So we, we added some, some code of code of conduct, research conduct, and guidance on ethics. So the library is slowly growing. And when we started in 2006, we identified about 50 reporting guidelines. And I thought, that's quite a lot. And we were quite surprised that it, 50 is just sounded so much. And every time we search, we find more and more. And um, what, what we can see in the literature is this trend that you have quite a limited number of generic guidelines like consort or strove statement, which provide quite generic recommendations for research methodology. And those should be observed every time somebody's writing that type of study. But they're not sufficient if somebody's doing a particular systematic review on a particular clinical topic. And systematic reviews, development of systematic reviews actually driving development of reporting guidelines to great extent because people who get frustrated when they're developing report of systematic review because they can't compare results across studies, they start working on reporting recommendations and those reporting recommendations are becoming more and more specific. So we see growth of those very specific, narrowly oriented reporting guidelines and I would suspect that <coughs> these guidelines will be growing in the future and we're moving more towards standardizing terminology, standardizing the outcomes which should be addressed in particular types of research and so on. So 
we're getting ready for that in the equator and I will, I will talk about it a um, little bit later. Our website is primarily uh, designed as a resource for researchers, authors of research papers, but we also accommodate for medical writers who, who are involved in the industry-sponsored research also trying to help editors to set up their policies on research reporting or peer reviewing. And as I mentioned, we're also trying to help people who develop reporting guidelines because the whole field is not that organized as, as perhaps the development of clinical practice guidelines. Um, well, this website has different shades of green, which you can't see, but basically shows that we, we have um, Growing, growing traffic on our website, growing number of users, and uh, so far we had about 900,000 visitors from almost every country in the world. And um, as one of my slides got corrupted, so I had to delete it under the guidance of IT support people. It showed really nice increase in, in, in the usage, and particularly in the UK where we do probably most of our work, and you can see that the active approach, active active implementation, active promotion really brings results. Um, Jason, when he spoke early on, he mentioned the editorial submission software, Manuscript Central. When I look into the Google Analytics reports, which sort of analyze traffic on our website, I can see growing number of people coming from these submission software, particularly from the manuscript, manuscript central. So for those who are involved in journal publishing, um, authors do, do follow the guidance and do, they do come to our website from these, from these uh, softwares. Um, more and more journals um, now include links to reporting guidelines or to equate and their instructions to authors. And um, we are particularly pleased about the ICMAG guidelines, the uniform requirements for biomedical manuscript, which uh, include now include list, link to the equator guidelines and highlight the need to follow reporting guidelines. And there's a growing number of editorials um, which introduce reporting guidelines to a particular journal, and we pick branch of those editorials and upload them or upload links to to these editorials on our website to give good examples to other journals what they can do because some of these editorials are very brief and they just mention the reasons why they decided to follow a particular reporting guidelines in their journals. But some editorials are very, very long trying to explain what the guidelines are about. So it's a very wide range of approaches. So we make this information available to save time to editors when they decide they want to do something in their journal so they can come to our website and see what has been done, what has been done previously um, in other journals. Recently, we also noticed that our database is becoming object of research. So people do search the database and they, um, they discuss, analyze various resources, which I think is very good. And uh, they discuss them in, uh, in light of the application in particular medical fields. I mentioned that we do, we organize courses and workshops on research reporting, but it's also really pleasing to see that there are now um, completely independent efforts um, being organized. And just by chance, a couple of days before I went to here, I realized that just as I speak, at this very moment, in Rome, it's in much hotter and sunnier weather, the same workshop is going on. British Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, they are running their workshop for their authors on equator resources, discussing consort, prisma, literally just as I speak. So uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, we're going to write to them after, after this meeting. Um, Ludovic mentioned that in 2010, we signed a collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization to raise research reporting standards in, the Lat in Latin America and Caribbean regions. And we translated our website into Spanish. And I must say, 
none of us in Oxford really speak Spanish, so it's extremely challenging because for two years I've been involved in editing and updating Spanish website, and I, I now pass this ungrateful task to my colleague Shona, and it is very challenging, and we very much look uh, forward to find somebody from that region to, to help us to develop this website into more local website where we would upload guidelines which are relevant, more relevant to the local needs um, identified in South America. And in about a week time, I'm going to Washington to the conference organized by DPAHO for journal editors from South America and uh, for health information specialists and scientists to discuss Equator, we will have uh, we will have Equator workshops. So I'm really hoping to find some collaborators to to help us develop this, and not only in in the Spanish region, but generally looking f for collaborators to help us develop um, different language sides of the website. Perhaps not translating the whole website, but to help us collate guidelines which are available in other languages, perhaps like J Jason mentioned, to provide some text, sample text for instructions to authors on research reporting policies in, um, in different languages. And instructions to authors, it's, it's a particular problem because I was, you know, thanks to our collaboration with PAHO, I was asked to write about this collaboration and submit it to the Spanish journal, and, and lots of journals publish in Latin America and publish both. They publish English version and Spanish version, and I'm being responsible author. First I went to the instructions to authors, and they were just in Spanish. So if, if you don't have instructions to authors available in language, authors can understand that's a real problem. Ah, we also try to issue regular, or sometimes less regular newsletter which we issue English version online, and we have over 2,000 subscribers, and we're also producing the translated PDF version in Spanish. Um, those are just some examples of courses we run. Um, yesterday, we had workshops introducing key guidelines for reporting health research studies. We also set up tradition of annual lectures, and tomorrow the symposium will end by our fourth annual lecture, which will be given by John Ioannidis. Um, we have lots of plans, and um, if we are given unlimited finances, we would be just extremely busy. Um, but what we would very much like to do is to establish Equator into an ongoing program of research support to provide high quality resources and training programs. And it's particularly important to, to target young people, young researchers, uh, medical research students, everybody who is just introduced into research. Um, I have research background myself and I was not very fortunate with sort of having really good mentor who would sort of guide me like in kindergarten. So I had to learn in a very painful way. But I think if we educate young people, we will save lots of work and lots of problems in, in the future. So um, we would very much like to focus now on development of really good education training program. Um, we also, um, in collaboration with David's team in, in Canada, we're hoping to develop a tool which would make, which would make um, evaluations of reporting guidelines easier. We, had, we have about 200 guidelines, and they're all, they're all very different in range, in scope, in their methods of development. But we as an equator, we, we, we sort of have this policy which is very, in, we're very inclusive at the moment, what we, what we provide through our website, because we think if somebody felt the need to develop those reporting recommendations, then it's justifiable. So we don't assess the guidelines if we think they are robustly developed or not. We don't make any judgment. But we also realize that for somebody who doesn't know the authors or the field that well, it is very difficult to judge if the guideline is really sensible, and particularly for editors, if they should 
really ask their authors to follow the guidelines. So we're hoping to start developing tool which would look at the most important attributes of reporting guidelines and provide more additional information on, on the guidelines we list on the website. 